B.C. Premier Christy Clark is dealing with the fallout from another volley of bad news in the lead-up to a May provincial election there. Starting a roundup of the latest from Battleground, British Columbia, we connect with Richard Zussman in Vancouver. Richard, what's the latest? Yeah, Daniel, we first brought you some results of an Angus Reid poll yesterday. We want to go a little bit more in depth on that poll today. It was a name association game that Angus Reid played with voters across British Columbia, asking them what word best described Premier Christy Clark and NDP leader Adrian Dix. Let's show you some of the results. First from Premier Clark, uh, and those were not very good for the Premier. The top four emotions for Christy Clark were 41% of British Columbians said she was out of touch, 39% said she was arrogant, 33% said she was secretive, 33 inefficient. When you look at Adrian Dix, the number's a little bit more positive. 36 said he was intelligent, 25 said he was down to earth, 22% said in touch, 21% said he was open. The reason why, according to pollster uh, Mario Canseco, that the numbers for Adrian Dix are a little bit lower, as he said, about 20% of the people they asked didn't have an opinion on Adrian Dix just yet. But I did ask the pollster to explain why he thought the results came out as they did. This isn't all the legacy of the Gordon Campbell years. There was a moment when she connected very well, particularly when she spoke about issues that really appealed to the center-left voters, such as the minimum wage. That's when they were doing a lot better. I think the flirtation with the conservatives and the idea that the conservatives were going to take away a lot of voters from their base really forced them into the corner of being more open with Harper. The poll also asked British Columbians what they thought of the BC Jobs ad, and that's that infamous domino ads that people here in British Columbia have been seeing a lot of. Well, those across the country haven't seen a lot of it. It's cost taxpayers $15 million, and let's have a look at that controversial ad. Unstable government policies have hurt people around the world. Big government, careless spending, and quick fixes have caused economies to collapse. But British Columbia is standing strong by controlling government spending, low taxes, and investing in skills training. British Columbia. Canada starts here. Learn what it means for you at bcjobsplan.ca. A message from the government of BC. And the BC NDP have been plugging away at this ad for a while now, Daniel, trying to remind uh, taxpayers it was paid for by them. When pollsters asked about this ad, 43% of British Columbians said it was a useless ad, 42% said it was deceiving, 31% said it was untrue. Also in BC politics today, the independent MLAs, there are four of them. Three of them together, Daniel held a news conference in Victoria. They want to change the fixed election dates from the spring to the fall in order to prevent the budget from basically being an election platform launch. They also want to change the way in which uh, parties can fundraise, which could fundamentally uh, change the way in which uh, parties head into elections and it could open up more doors to independent MLAs. Very thorough as usual, Richard. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> Thanks, Daniel. Poor personal polling numbers for Christy Clark will surely have our next guest smiling. He's David Eby, the NDP candidate looking to unseat Clark in her riding and the former head of the B.C. Civil Liberties Association. Good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. So let's start by talking about some of the polling numbers here that we've already talked about on the show. I mean, as far as public opinion goes... Christy Clark seems to have a, a, a bit of a problem, you know, 41% telling Angus Reid that she is out of touch, 39% uh, saying she's arrogant, not the kind of thing that I guess a premier or any candidate would want just a few months before an election. Well, it's, it's really interesting uh, here in British Columbia. It's uh, uh, one of the most negative uh, campaigns uh, we've ever seen in the province coming from the Liberals and I can't help but feel that the negativity really breeds more negativity and uh, perhaps that's what's happening. Um, I think that as far as our party is concerned we're just focused on running a positive campaign that's going to set out what we're going to do. It's going to be very predictable and people are going to understand that we're changing things for the better through practical steps and I think that that's all we can do. At the same time, you know, Adrian Dix's numbers are more positive than, than Christy Clark's, but the NDP leader, you know, 36% will tell you that he's intelligent, and that's a good thing to have. 
but only 25% say he's down to earth, uh, only 22% say he's in touch. There seem to be uh, some negatives on his side as well. Well, I think the big challenge for our party is to get out there with our message, and certainly Adrian's been out there very aggressively in ridings across the province, uh, letting people know uh, what our plan is for the province, uh, setting things out, uh, and uh, people are getting to know him in that leadership role, and I think that it's been a very positive thing so far, and I think what they're really appreciating uh, is uh, the positive tone of the campaign that's coming from us. Uh, I think they're tired of the negativity in politics, and, uh, and I think that may be reflected in the numbers you're looking at. Well, you know, one of the ads that has made some waves in British Columbia actually is a positive ad from the B.C. Liberals, the, the so-called domino ad that has all those uh, dominoes uh, coming up to British Columbia, but British Columbia's economy uh, staying solid. It's kind of a fun one to watch. Uh, doesn't, doesn't pull very well, interestingly, even though it is a, a positive message, 41% saying that it is uh, not very convincing to them. Well, I think uh, the frustration for a lot of people uh, is knowing that their public dollars, their tax dollars, are uh, going to fund uh, what are essentially campaign ads advertising the jobs plan uh, that the BC Liberals uh, say they're putting forward. Uh, they don't understand why our uh, government is on one hand saying, oh, money's very tight, uh, we've got a very difficult budget coming up. And uh, on the other hand, spending uh, uh, more than $10 million, $11 million was the last figure I saw, to, uh, to promote uh, uh, to British Columbians uh, that the government is doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, I think that uh, disconnect is, uh, is really frustrating people every time they see those ads, and that's why the NDP has said, uh, we need to stop using public dollars for these partisan ads. Uh, and we need to have the Auditor General have some review of that process. Uh, I want to take a bit of a trip down memory lane with you. I know that you headed up the BCCLA. Uh, you gave an interview to the Western Standard magazine, uh, which obviously was, uh, Ezra Levant was very associated uh, with that magazine. This was back in November of 2008. And at the time you had said that the BCCLA supports repealing Section 13 of the BC and other, uh, B of the Canadian Human Rights Act and its equivalent in the BC and other provincial legislation. Uh, we oppose restrictions on freedom of expression generally, and any exceptions to that have to be clearly defined and strongly mandated by the facts. Is that still your position today? Well, uh, you know, working with the BC Civil Liberties Association was a real privilege for me. It was, uh, it was uh, an opportunity to get out there and talk about critical issues like free speech. Uh, and uh, and I'm, I'm very grateful uh, for the opportunity to, uh, to talk about these issues, including on uh, Sun TV and, and on other outlets. Um, as far as uh, the NDP's position on uh, the uh, Section 13 of the Human Rights Code and so on, um, I, I'm not aware of where the, the party is on that right now. But I do know that what's critical for the party um, is setting out um, very uh, practical steps that people are concerned about. And I think that uh, people are concerned about free speech issues, they're concerned about transparency issues, and they're concerned about a lot of the issues that I talked about at the Civil Liberties Association. Um, and, uh, and, you know, I think it's a fair question to ask about uh, where the party's going to head on these various issues. But right now, what the focus for the party is, uh, is our platform, which focuses on skills training and the environment and other priorities. And uh, that's the team I'm on right now, and that's what we're looking at. But the, the reason I ask it, and, and I, I press the issue, is because there is legislation making its way through the House of Commons now. And I know the B.C. legislature doesn't deal with that uh, directly, but it's already passed the House. It's in the Senate's hands right now, and the NDP federally has opposed this. So I'm wondering if your position in the past is going to clash with your position in the present or with the party's position. Well, as you note, I mean, currently this is a federal issue that the federal government is looking at. Um, I don't see any conflict uh, in terms of uh, positions I've taken in the past on issues of transparency, accountability, and free speech with, um, with the party. Um, but it's also important to note um, that the priorities for the party right now um, are really focused on the day-to-day -day issues that matter to British Columbians. And, and that's my priority as an MLA, and I'll be representing the people of Vancouver Point Grey. And I've got to say what they're worried about is they're worried about uh, uh, pipelines and tankers, and they're worried about uh, the school system, they're worried about our health care system, and they're worried about transit along the Broadway corridor. And those will be my priorities as well. All right, David Eby, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.